What's in the box? So I'm pushing my hands through this wall that has these two holes cut out just big enough for my arms. There's some kind of fabric, like pushing my hands through a curtain, a curtain hole in the wall, so that I can't see what my hands are about to find. And there's a sort of table or a surface, hard surface, when I reach forward through the wall. Yeah, there's something here, quite small, like the size of my palm, or maybe even smaller. Hard, hard but bendy. And brittle or very flat. So when I put it in between my hands, it it's almost like my hands can touch. It's not much wider than a finger, probably less wide. And it's knobbly and smooth. It's got maybe 10 knobbles. Oh, that's a good sound. Yeah, it's very noisy. Like, um, like a rustling crisp packet, or how crisp packets used to, the material they used to be made out of, rustly. But also, sounds like Yeah, it sounds like radio static or crackling, like Yeah, they're called um maybe that's why because of the sound blister packs. I think they're called blister packs, maybe because when you push the paracetamol out or the pill, the, the little bed that it was lying in blisters, or the sound or the feel of pushing it out of the pouch is like popping a blister. Or because that sound is like a blister, like blistering. Or because they feel raised, like blisters. I mean, they're very plain objects, but they're also quite ugly. When Dad had died, we had to throw out hundreds and hundreds of packs of these different tablets, but all in these blister packs. We filled one of those huge plastic, clear plastic storage boxes, just firing in these boxes and blister packs till it was pretty much full. Yeah, and you can't... You can't reuse them. We tried to give them back to the chemist who agreed to come and collect them. 
but only so that they could be destroyed safely. You can't reuse them, even if, even if they're protected in this perfect little sealed, shiny blister pack. It was a bit of a gift to get rid of them, really. I mean, I think the amount of medication that he was on was just gruelling and he hated taking all these tablets and... Yeah, that part's a relief. I was listening to this article the other day and they talked about... Uh, a quote from Nietzsche who said something like the final reward of the dead is to die no more and as I was chucking those pills out I thought well this is a reward for you to be rid of these Hmm. This feels soft, really soft, and a bit cool to the touch. Yeah, very soft, like feathers like it's made up of individual leaves or yeah and then there's a hard bendy stick stem I think it's a flower of some kind The stem feels supple and very smooth, but the rest of it feels very light. So when I push it onto the back of my hand, the petals kind of smudge into the shape of my hand. It feels really nice to just run my fingers through the petals, like pulling them apart. And they feel really fragile, but they also feel quite bouncy. Like they hold their shape. Big petals. I think, yeah, they kind of circle around. I think it's a rose. I think it's one of my dad's roses. I don't know which type. Normally I could tell from the smell the dark red ones were really pungent. But the pink and peach ones were really 
light, like sweet fragrance, but very subtle. These roses that he grew in his garden, they were probably the last thing he saw when he died because I'd just been outside and cut some and put them in a vase at the bottom of the hospital bed that we had set up in the living room. The really pungent red ones. Funny to think of that huge man and those rough hands manipulating these soft petals so light and fragile they're so fragile but they've survived they've outlived him they're here even when he's disappeared Cold, really cold metal, but that shape of a sort of moon shape made out of metal gives it away, and the long, soft wood. It's definitely a hammer. It has quite a particular weight. Like, like those kind of spinny top toys that always had, that even if you knocked them over, it would kind of balance upright again. This feels kind of precarious, all the weight being at the bottom. But the handle is so smooth, so worn, worn in. I mean, you must have used this so much. It's so smooth. It feels of your hands, your working hands, all the times you touched it or grabbed it by the handle. If I try really hard, I feel like I can feel your hand in it. Yeah, your work. I mean, I guess you worked a lot through touch too. These coarse, enormous hands traveling along grain or joint or a raw edge of wood. It looked so easy for you to puzzle these disparate bits of wood together to make a cohesive thing. As a kid, it always made me feel quite safe, like you could fix anything, you could put anything back together, like everything could be ordered, made whole, put right, in ways that we couldn't really do elsewhere in our family. Of course, it also reminds me of the time you took a sledgehammer to our kitchen. A much bigger hammer leaving a much bigger dent in the lino floor of the kitchen, which is still there to this day, and we all pretend that we can't see it. We lift our feet, treading carefully over it.
right now we're in this process of sorting through everything, clearing out of here, abandoning ship, or in our case, shed. We trawl through all of this, all of these objects of yours, trying to choose what to keep and what to get rid of. And as we're doing it, we're unearthing these storms of dust and dirt and debris. And there's so much stuff. A shed, more like an outhouse, piled with things that you ran out of time to use, that you kept for when they came in handy. And at some point, I just give up and I start this kind of urgent state of glee just comes right over me and I just start ripping everything out and pulling things down off these wooden shelves and chucking them into the pile on the patio and it's a kind of fervor or a kind of rage or a rebellion and all I keep thinking is just get rid I want rid and it the feeling's so strong that it overtakes this guilt of thinking about what you'd think if you could see us rioting over these carefully stowed treasures. And as they hit the brickwork on the patio, they just shatter and splinter into all their component parts. Bits of old kitchen cabinets or defunct tools smashing into smithereens. Clouds of dust and debris like this sugar. And it feels so good to make such a mess. To just grab it and just let it all smash, let it all splinter. Like the thing you know you shouldn't be doing like running your hands into a big pile of sugar and letting the grains stick to the clamminess of your hands. Like rough little grains of sand. It feels so soft and cool and kind of luscious to scoop it up in your fingers or push your fingers into this pile of sugar. Like pushing your hand into a pile of sand. And you you know that it's going to get everywhere. You, you, you can't contain it anymore, this once neat pile. And that for days you're going to be noticing little flakes of sugar tucked in between a knuckle. A little sweet treat kept for later. So sweet, but also so rough. It's really cold, like fridge cold.
and actually it has a smell. It definitely smells of my dad's shed. Like, like the smell of rust. It smells, I don't know if rust has a smell, but I, I, that's what I think of. And yeah, and wet timber and oil and sawdust. And it's big. Maybe this thing's like the size of my head. Big head made of metal with a flex. I think that's a, a cable. And a plug, yeah, a plug. Feels like jaws, like a mouth with its teeth bared. Yeah, it's definitely metal. It sounds heavy, firm, solid. But maybe circular, the sort of rocks. And it's rough and spiky. Lots of hard angles and bits sticking out, metal protrusions. Solid, feels really solid. And kind of tough. If this object had an aura or like an energy, I'd say it's aura is brutal, it's brutal. It's got lots of round bits, it's mainly round and as I try and tip it it's really heavy like the weight of a couple of bricks. It's definitely some kind of like tool or equipment, like a power tool or yeah, I think it I've got no idea what its use is. Could be a plane or I mean how hilarious we're constantly looking through these items and most of the time we don't even know what their use is, let alone how to use them. Really shudders. It feels weirdly human, maybe because it's the size of a head. And it 
does weirdly feel like you. Like, if you were an object, maybe you'd be this one. Solid and useful and a bit dangerous. Cold. Round. Ball shaped. Sticky, rough. Mm. Knobbly at the top, cupped hands, fits inside cupped hands, on a plate, some kind of fruit or vegetable, I think it has, it has a kind of skin like citrus maybe an orange because when I rub it on my skin it's kind of smooth but also it grips like a waxy friction Yeah, and heavy, quite heavy. Maybe more like a grapefruit. Yeah, I think it's a grapefruit. My dad would eat pink grapefruits. Which, if you knew him, You'd understand why that was kind of strangely astonishing. I mean, they were quite they were quite avant-garde in the eighties in Coventry to find a pink grapefruit. He loved them, but he wouldn't actually use a knife. He'd get one out of the bowl and roll it really forcefully on the kitchen counter. And he used to say that that freed up the juice, made it extra juicy. And then he'd just dig into it and peel it like an orange. But it's got much thicker skin than an orange, but he'd just peel it, standing over the counter, and break it into segments with a bit of pith still attached. And then he'd just dip it in the sugar bowl that would be there with all the tea stuff and just eat it straight away. This sugar and juice running down his hands. Yeah, and it remains the most out of character thing I think I've ever seen him do. This kind of quite free, pleasurable, informal thing this kind of little indulgence. I used to hate the taste of them as a kid. He'd always tried to get me to try it, partly because I think he liked the look of sour shock on my face. But now I quite like them. Things change, tastes change, people change. And every now and again, I catch myself at the kitchen counter, peeling and dipping into the sugar bowl. 
the soft and the hard and the sweet and the sour. And they are more juicy if you roll them on the counter. But you do get more pith when you peel them. and you definitely make more of a mess. In memory of Joseph Bannon. Written and directed by Joe Bannon. Co-directed by John Stevenson. Sound mixed by Alan Deacon. Commissioned by Don't Google It.